That's that bone. This is talus connects to your heel bone. Okay. Your calcaneus or your, or your heel. But what happens is um, the way people between them. Well, this bone actually forms a stop, so it's harder for you to turn your ankle that way than it is to go this way. That's why most of them you see, you're going to roll your foot just like I did, underneath it. You can go the other way. It's, it's not impossible to spring your ankle that way. Usually when you do, you'll get a fracture out here called a POTS, P-O-T-T-S fracture, which they usually have to surgically repair. It's a real treat. They basically put a giant wood screw in your foot and put you in a cast. Um, and they're much higher, much much more difficult the ankle sprain to train uh, to, to to bring back. Um, the other type of ankle sprain you hear a lot, you know, in athletics, you know, the guy also he has a high ankle sprain. You never used to hear that term. Now it's become kind of common. What a high ankle sprain is is these two bones have a tendon to hold them together. I'm sorry, a ligament that holds them together. And what they'll do is they'll sprain that ligament, so they actually spring the mortise of the joint. It's a pretty painful injury, also, obviously. Uh, ligaments hold bones together. Bone to bone is a ligament. Uh, muscle to bone is a tendon. Uh, yeah. Big tendon in your body that you know you can see pretty easily in your foot is your, your, your Achilles tendon. It takes the muscles from the back of your leg and it's what makes you point your foot. In front of your foot, all the tendons run from the front, basically outside your leg, across your ankle, all down to your toes basically. So if you ever sprain your ankle and you want to rehabilitate it, First thing you want to do is ice it, keep it, keep it from swelling. That's, that's, that's job number one when you strain your ankle in the field. If you can keep the swelling out of it, you're, you're a heck of a lot better off. You're going to have some mobility in it, get a like. Um, down the road, though, you want to start building some strength back into your ankle. And uh, there's ways you can do it. You can throw a towel on the ground like this, put your heel on a corner, and I can't do it because I've got socks on, but and cr crinkle it up with your toes. You can, you can lay the towel to the side. And, and, and drag it across this way. You can towel, you know, you can drag it across this way. You can lay it out this way, drag it across this way. You're doing that, you, you actually, you feel, you're going to feel it up in your calves, but all of those tendons run through your ankle joints, so you're actually strengthening your ankle while you do that type of an exercise. Uh, well, the ligaments, they act like kind of like a rubber band. Holds, That's exactly what they are. Yep. Uh, people will say they sprain their ankle. And you always sprain ligaments. You'll hear people say they strained an ankle. When you strain a joint, you've strained a tendon. Mm -hmm. And basically, they rate them just like they do a burn: first, second, and third degree sprains. First degree, you get like a little bit of a little bit of tugging. You know, everything kind of goes back the way it belongs. It's not a big deal. Second degree, you, you, you know, they really pulled out. They may be a little bit of fraying around. It's, you're getting kind of you're getting kind of ugly. Third degree, they popped. They they they, they split apart. They almost always have to be surgically repaired if you do that. Now, can you have a strain and a sprain at the same time? Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's um, more common if you were to step into a hole, you, know, you bring your foot up into, into extreme flexion like this is a good way to do it. Another way is to catch your toe and come down on mm -hmm. it. That's a pretty good way to do both at once. You can sprain any joint. You can sprain your fingers, you can strain your fingers, uh, your elbows, your, and any, any joint that's held together with ligaments. So. Strain your, your, your breastbone actually if you cough hard enough. Uh, quick way to fix them in the field, a uh, way to wrap them, is uh, he was an ace band like I had to do on, on, on Ian last night. Or you can get this stuff at a store, uh, most sporting goods stores sell it. It's basically two inch wide biased tape, there's no, there's no stretching. Uh, it's very difficult to tear, it's, it's solid stuff. It has a lot of uses. You can, you know, you improvise splints with it. You can uh, tie your top up with it. It's, it's really pretty cool stuff to have, and it doesn't take up a lot of room in your pack. Cotton? Uh, yeah, it is. Cotton or linen or something. They call it ankle wraps. Uh, this is the way it's sold. And the way you wrap an ankle, normally you do this over a sock. And slide, slide, uh, so you hand up the end for me, right? Ian? This way. There you go. Now remember I said the way you sprain your ankle is you turn it under. Okay? So what you want to start with is this way. And you pull the ankle the way, you know, you support it the way it was going to turn. Go it over, make what they call a figure of eight. Down the outside the heel, lock the heel in. Around, lock the other heel in. 
that's it. And then you're, just, you're gonna have a lot left over, so you just double yourself over again. Do your figure eight. Your heel lock. Your other heel lock. And you're gonna come up short, you know, to where you finish. A little bit of duct tape, a little bit of athletic tape would be ideal. You know, then, but, and that'll give him the stability he wants, right? Yeah. Feels tight. Not too tight, nice. though. What you're doing, I'm going to have you guys practice this, but you are wrapping his ankle. You're not wrapping his forefoot. And if you do get too far out on the foot, you start getting down in here, you pinch off a little tendon over here, and it is some painful. Yeah, you know about it. You, yeah, you'll know it real fast. Your foot will go to sleep. It's just a real nasty, painful thing. You don't want to do it. If you left it tight like that, and the guy decided he'd walk through it, he was going to be a tough guy, he could get some serious uh, neurological damage down the line from it. Again, you're wrapping the ankles. And you're doing the first one. <laughs> well, you're gonna have to roll that up first. All right. So, I so go the first move you make is gonna be. Nope. Yep. Now you're pulling his ankle. Opposite the way it would naturally naturally twist. There you go. The figure eight. Very nice. Now down behind the heel. Yep. Catch. Like that. Nope. Nope. Go back. There you go. And come catch the out the heel. Come under the foot. Towards me and under the foot. Under here. You want to try to leave like a cup at the back of the okay. heel. Okay. Oh, I got it. I got it. And down. Oh, down again. Go door on our heel. There you go. Lock the heel under the foot. You're too sharp an angle, but so it's going to flop off on you. There you go. You need to be coming from in around here. And down the us. So come. There you go. No, oh, there you go. Perfect. And then back around the shin. Yeah. And then uh, you do the inside, outside lock, inside, yeah. outside. Yep. Yeah. Good. And then you just copy your pattern again. Do another figure eight. Do your two heel locks. Okay. So this comes down as a heel lock. So it's a figure of eight, two heel locks, figure of eight? Uh, no, I, I've, yeah, well, it's an inside, in lock, you lock the inside, you lock the outside, and then you do another figure of eight, and inside and outside. Fishing. So it's inside, and outside, you, lock, two yeah. locks. Yep. If you get long enough ace, if you, I mean, you can get the double length ace, you end up having to go up the guy's leg with a couple of turns, and it's so long, you just can't get it back in a boot. Yeah, it's perfect. That'll work. Yeah, a little tighter, but other than that, it feels good. Check the toes, make sure you got good circulation. Stuff it it's back in his boots away. Yeah, it should come right back. You're going to ask the guy, you know, any uh, numbness, any tingling, anything like that. Obviously, he's going to stop squawking. He'll squawk right away, usually. Uh, and then check it periodically, because if he starts swelling up, you could you could lose. You know, it could be some come so tight, you do lose circulation. And, he may not realize he's lost it, so you actually have to look. You take the boot off and check the toes again. You just can't ask, how's your foot feel? He'll say, oh, it's fine. <laughs> and, uh, um, is that a triangular bandage? Yeah, this is, a mil this is actually a military one. Uh, 782. Probably took it with me when I left. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they don't that. account for him. Yeah, you'd be surprised. This is... This is Advantage. So it's just like a giant triangular giant tri bandana. That's what I call them triangle bandages, a giant triangle. You can make a sling out of them. Our neck, tie a bow tie, right? It's a sling. You can do a head, you know, do the head thing. The do rags. Do rags like they do with them. Uh, you could, if you had a cut, like say you had a big, a big slash in your head or something, ran to a, ran to a tree or something, put a gauze pad on top of that. To wrap that on top. Do this thing on top of that, and then you've you've got it in place. Because you're gonna have a lot of trouble unless you want to put duct tape on some man's head. So it's a nice way to put it, you know, anywhere on the scalp. You you can you can dress with a bandage, a piece of gauze, and, and a triangular bandage. The other thing you do with triangular bandages, you turn them into what they call cravats. Basically, what you do is you bring that to that, that to that, and one more. This is a nice piece of piece of equipment. You can uh, put a pressure bandage on someone. You know, if you had a cut on the thigh, put a gauze to it, over it. You know, tie it down. This is a great job for that. 
you want to tie somebody into a stretcher, there's a great job for that. You want to stabilize an IV with it, you can, you can stabilize the tube and after you get the IV in, don't ever do that. Um, but you could. This is um, if you're up the creek you, without a paddle? If you're properly trained. If you know IVs. how to do IV, that's yeah. why I said don't ever, don't ever do it, but you, you certainly could do it. Um, the other thing is if you do a shoulder dislocation, you sling it with a triangular band, like, like I just, you know, I did quickly. But the thing is, with a, with a shoulder dislocation is, with a sling, all you're doing is supporting the weight of the arm. You can still bring your arm up and down in the sling, which you don't want to do with a dislocated shoulder. So you take one, do your triangular, and then run around the body with one of these. And, and, uh, you so sling, that way sling it a swath, they call it. supports the weight of the arm, but you, doesn't let you lift it up. Exactly, you're holding it up, to, up, to, up tight to the body. Uh, but you can also do an ankle wrap with these. You do the, you do the cravat thing. Which I lost this. If you notice, when this came out of the package, it was already folded up into that configuration. Uh, there's actually two reasons they do that. Um, one is to fit in the plastic bag, but the other is it's it's ready to go if you're going to have to use it as a, as a uh, tourniquet. Overboot. You can do one of them numbers, which is basically just a figure of eight. But it does support the ankle, you know, especially if you have a nice boot on to begin with. It does a pretty good job of holding the ankle steady. That's just not as good as the ace bandage. No, but, but it, it, work. it definitely works as a feel, uh, you know, feel expedient way to do it. And again, if you are going to use one of these as a tourniquet, the way they do it is... <laughs> Thanks, John. Good stick that ain't gonna fail, and that's where that's where most improvised that fail. It, it isn't the bandage that fails; it's, it's what you're using for your for your windlass. But you do a knot, you put your windlass, you do a knot over that, and you go to town. Don't publish that. I don't want. I don't want my name associated with that shit. But that's how you use one of these for that. It's all right. I keep trying to look here, and I ended up pointing the camera over the bushes. So anyway, that's how you do. It. If you ever have to do one, that, that's how you do it. Uh huh? That's you. Shooting up the camp. So, uh, those are the cops shooting them. Little triangle band, John. And Jimmy here. Count. Yep, sling it off. Over right, just regular. You do it a piece of rope, you do it with a cloth. And then this end, you don't want it to flopping out. So, you're going to do this. Usually, you just do it, turn it on, turns on, and slip up. You know, a little bonnet to that so it doesn't go away. You can always use the safety as it goes with. Yep. And then here, people love to do this. You want to support the whole hand. And the last thing you want to do, check the fingers again to make sure you haven't cut off any circulation, circulation. in this routine. Ask him if he's comfortable. You feel good? How you doing? Now, if this was a shoulder problem, not not a, not a fractured forearm or a, you know something like that, I don't want this routine. You know, I'm walking out with him. So we'd uh, you can either do a second triangular. In, fold it up in that cravat and wrap it around like I showed you or if you have one of these with you or you have an ace with you uh, I wouldn't use 550 cord it's, that's pretty rude to do to somebody <laughs> uh, if you had to do something like that I would suggest wrapping a t-shirt around yeah, something, say, to, something to some, yeah, yeah just don't run that stuff around a human but uh, if you had to, you know rifle sling would work you no know, nice thick a guy's belt web belt or a spare belt or a strap off a pack You know, you, you, there's, there's ways you could do it. And basically, you just run right around a guy. And you do this. The bristle of a drag, bristle of a dragon, sorry. <laughs> Say it. Now you've, now you've, you, you've taken away that, that motion. Again, check to make sure because now you've tightened again. So make sure yeah. ask you breathing okay, and I haven't screw, switched your lungs too much or anything, right? Okay. You're not you're not you don't mind that guy forever. You're just taking that motion out of it. That's a sling and a swath, and it's pretty, it works pretty well. You can walk out with that if you had to. Yeah. I'm not going to get away too far.